course, it starts while I was taking a drink. So there we go. That is the, the best way to start this. This is the third session of three of 7th C Katai from the Katai Quick Start uh, from the uh, Kickstarter, which has just uh, successfully funded last week. This is the 7th C second edition, uh, but taken to essentially to the Eastern realms of the world, to the various uh, Asian analogs. Um, and uh, we've played a couple sessions of this so far. We uh, had the, the characters uh, find out about uh, a plot that involved the burning of a monastery, the framing of uh, some nobles, and essentially an evil magistrate. And where the situation is right now is the group went to try and confront the evil magistrate, uh, and to figure out what was going on, they were able to sort of break the magistrate's hold over the castle and rescue this uh, the lady of the castle who was uh, essentially going to be framed for the crime and stop the, uh, uh, the her Yojimbo essentially from killing her because she believed she was involved with it. Uh, and you were able to retrieve one of these two Yamazaki blades, um, which are magical infused weapons. This is uh, the death giving blade was the one that you found. The other one, the life giving blade is missing. What you've been able to determine is that it was put into the hands of this uh, evil magistrate uh, who uh, named uh, Horio and uh, he had uh, taken it. And then when uh, the apprentice magistrate Suzu was sent uh, to to report into him, he realized that there was a group of heroes hot on his tail. Uh, so uh, Horio took off with the life-giving blade as well as uh, took uh, Suryu hostage and headed out. Uh, the group were able to dispatch uh, Horio's uh, uh, prized lieutenants um, uh, with, with alacrity, I think is the way I want to put that. Um, uh, uh, there was going to be a big kind of uh, a showdown moment, and uh, uh, I believe it was Fraser that flew across the the battlefield before we could even hear the, the whistle uh, uh, start. So, um, what we sort of set up last time is the the group uh, heading to pursue uh, Magistrate Horio, uh, and having found uh, some information that suggested that he had headed to Han, to the country across the sea, that uh, he had contacts there and had fled uh, before you towards there. And uh, that's sort of where we uh, left off last time. So if this were a, uh, a film uh, or a TV episode, we would come in and we would actually see you three uh, aboard a ship at sea, um, uh, you, you know, the, 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 the waves kind of tossing, the, the mist on the water. Um, what's our sort of uh, pan shot? What do we see? Uh, uh, let me get all the names here again so I can get them all wrong. What we see Ishikawa when the camera kind of zooms or pans in on this ship, what do we see you doing? Uh, Ishikawa is, has in a hammock. If that, if that, I don't think that's even genre appropriate, like at the timeline. So he's laying okay. on the deck. <laughs> he's laying on the deck with his katana laid upon his chest, uh, and perhaps like some rope as a pillow, and he is sleeping. Okay. And uh, then what do we see of? Uh, when the camera moves away and searches and finds uh, Akiyama, um, what what do we see Akiyama? What is her reaction to, to travel at sea? And what is her, her friend's reaction to it? I think her friend, um, who, in case anyone needs a reminder, is a gigantic brown bear, uh, armored bear named Koinu. Um, I think Koinu doesn't do so well aboard ships. Uh, she... She gets a little unsettled and a little bit nervous with the rocking of the ship. She likes to feel the solid earth underneath her her paws as uh, bears are strong with the earth spirits, right? So I think Akiyama is playing a, a wind instrument, a wooden flute, 
that she knows uh, will soothe Koinu and maybe a few, maybe she's gathered a, a small audience that are kind of listening to her play. And I think she, she, she even dances a little while she plays or she just moves about gracefully. Excellent. And uh, uh, move away from that. When you go a little further down, where do we see Naoko? Um, I think the the camera goes down, but then it suddenly goes up, and it uh, we go through like the masting and all that stuff, and she's at the very top of the the crow's nest, and she's peering out, and she just like I think this entire time before we've seen her look very sullen or angry, but now she looks like. Um, kind of infantile and, and adventurous and uh, super into it. And uh, the TV splurged on the CGI before <laughs> us. <laughs> it's a beautiful they, ocean. <laughs> they've reused a lot of old stock uh, CG to, to, to make it, it look good from uh, some uh, uh, earlier films, but, but it looks yeah. sharp. Um, we would have the flashback uh, to uh, you three uh, speaking kind of in a, a candlelit chamber with uh, Lady Manabe, the blade in its black sheath laid in front of her. And she is has, has sort of been talking about how important it is to bring the life-giving blade back. That these two weapons need to be stored away. They, given enough time, they will become powerful and they will bring hell um, upon each other. And the turmoil that they will cause cannot be measured at this point. Um, and if it is outside of Fuso, if it is in another country, who knows what that might mean, what the blade might do to return itself to Fuso, and perhaps at the head of an army you know, or a fleet, who knows? It needs to be returned, and Magistrate Horio needs to be brought to justice. Um, if you three, if you th can travel, if you can pursue him, if he has truly gone to the Han, as these notes seem to indicate, then someone needs to go there and find the sword and retrieve it. Uh, he seems to have corresponded with a highly placed official named Min Jun. That's a name we have, but I, as I am not familiar with the ways of the Han court. I know of a admiral in the Han, Admiral Jihu. She is respectable. Uh, she is uh, uh, supposed to be solid um, and reliable, even in the face of the Han's somewhat mad king. So I will write you a letter to her, and perhaps when you arrive, she might be able to aid you. It is much I ask of you. Is there anything that I can do to aid you in this endeavor? Apparently, we need a ship. I can give you coin, um, and my suggestion is that you head to Ujimichi, um, and there uh, traffic goes back and forth between Fuso and uh, the Han. It's undoubtedly where Horio headed, and uh, I can give you money to uh, charter a vessel, or at least to, to find a vessel that is going and be able to travel on with it. Lady Manabe, this, oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering, does somebody need to wield this dark sword against someone who would wield the light one? Like, could could someone use their own sword and be comparable against it? Or should perhaps our samurai be wielding this darkness? 
she'll look at you. What mm. what say you, Ishikawa? I have no great love for the idea of carrying such a dark thing. But if it is necessary, I will do it. If the power of the life-giving sword has grown, then this may be the only thing that can match it. Lady Manabe, we have seen the destructive power of the death-bringing sword, and if these two spiritual blades are... Uh, are balanced in nature, what can we expect from the life-bringing sword? If, if by chance one of us gets caught alone, what measures could we take to protect ourselves? The life-giving sword exerts its power to preserve the life of its bearer and the life of the, bear, the persons the bearer holds dear. Um, Beyond that, I am uncertain. It was my husband who knew more of the lore of this thing. That is sufficient for now. I I will consult with the spirits, and perhaps they will have more information for me. But thank you for what you've already done. And she'll she'll lean forward, and she will lift up the the sword and bow and. Hold it out to you, Ishikawa, in its sheath. Ishikawa very formally receives the blade, bows low to her. And a crow cause. Yeah. (laughs) It's more that you can feel the blade go, (sighs) like it's in the hands of someone that could use it. Hmm. And uh, we're going to cut from there. And we actually, of course, uh, there's some continuity errors here. So when we come back after the flashback to the ship, it's now dark. Um, And, uh, uh, you know, you're sitting on the deck and and, uh, the the music has died off. And maybe you've come down off of the the crow's nest um, uh, on the the ship. And again, uh, uh, a uh, a little lower to the water are these uh, ships, a little bit wider, a little more square design to them. Uh, so the, the sort of uh, those angles and the, the sails are cut a little bit differently, but very much like that. The, the ship has, has a, it's more of a tradesman ship, um, but it does have a, a couple of guns. Um, and uh, you are, are seated there speaking here as it's grown dark um they've brought wine over for you you know uh as honored passengers here um but it is sort of as you're sitting there um that you will all get that sort of hackles on the back of your neck that feeling of a kind of a shift in the atmosphere here on on the vessel and uh i also also want to remind you something i forgot to to mention uh each of you can if you wish raise a skill or a trait by one okay oh and are we healed you are also healed of all your damage Cool. Um, you will reset to your hero points, though. Right. So we'll get two. one or two. And we can raise a trait or a skill. Yeah. Dang. I lost Either a lot one. of hero points, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. By <laughs> half. Um, I think I got better at brawling. Okay. I, I headbutt people real good. I'm going to say that my encounter with uh, dealing with the earth spirits and trying to uh, sever um, that whatever her name was, the uh, the guard of Lady Manabe. Um, oh, yeah. The, um, uh, 
uh, not Asakano. Um, I have it right here. Uh, Katashika. Katashika. Yeah, when I was trying to sever her connection with the death bringing blade and the hold that it had over her, I think that kind of leveled me up in my mysticism and gave me a new insight or understanding into the nature of of spirits in that way. Perfect. And what about you, Ishikawa? I think it would be wise if he studied the ways of warfare and remember all of the battles that he has seen. This seems cheap to raise weaponry to four, so I'll just raise warfare. Everybody else is raising this stuff to four. Well, screw it then. I'm going to raise weaponry to four. Okay. That's a 15 equals two raises, baby. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ishikawa, you have been studying the way of the sword and... and uh, trying to, to, to balance your own karma with the blades karma and paying attention to that. And there is that feeling that you will get as well as the others out on the deck that the atmosphere has turned tense. Um, and you will look around and you will notice that the, there are none of the crew near you, but they've kind of gathered into some groups in a couple of different places and uh you can see down at the end uh the the captain uh is standing there uh speaking with a couple of them and it just is, starts to feel weird like something is amiss here uh, uh on the the boat uh and, Does Koinu um, react, react in any way? Is, the, is this something maybe supernatural, or is it more of just the en environment? It's more just the environment. Koinu is probably looking a little green, okay. um, uh, as green as a, a brown bear can look. Um, and <laughs> I put a picture of the captain into the, uh, the NPC sheet there. Nice. And uh, you see they've kind of are turning around and you will note that, you know, you see the glint of maybe a knife, hammer, maybe one of has a, a you know, a, a sickle, um, and they're starting to move and you have the feeling like it's about to, to get unpleasant. Hmm. It's about to get real. I'll sit up, groan a little bit, look up. Is Nelko still like doing crazy wire foo? Or oh, I think we're sitting together on top of now. Okay, we're sitting together. All right. Be careful. It seems that we may have a little trouble. And I look at your sword. <laughs> Is that the trouble you speak of? Glance over at the sailors coming our way. No, not yet. Are they? Um, they are with the captain or apart from the captain? Yeah, no. It looks like the captain's kind of been talking to some crew people, and now some groups of the the crewmen, the burliest, most warrior types, have been kind of organized and. They're being trying to be as nonchalant as they can um, mm -hmm. here, as, you know, because it's gotten kind of a little bit dark. So they're taking advantage of that, and they are definitely. So the captain seems aligned with them. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that sucks. So, so you just asked about the sword, and I think I say, if, and I'm kind of like looking up and seeing this now, and I say, if their intentions are more impure than we had suspected, are you prepared to use it? And I, I look you right in the eyes. No, they're sailors. There are many of them. I'm not one to be scared in situations like this, but this is a large crew. Start to whisper as they get closer. Stand up. I'm not answering it a second time. Okay. <clears throat> so you stand up. They uh, do a pause there. And uh, the captain goes, 
I am so sorry. And he'll throw some coins down towards you. I must return your money. Why? Because Magistrate Horio already paid us very well. You will not live to spend it if you attack us. You are at sea, my friend. We are the kings of that. Kill them! That was a good line, though. That was awesome. And they will, will there's that, rah, as the three groups charge forward at you. Um, so uh, all of you get to decide your uh, approach and what skill you're using and uh, decide your dice um, and describe it. So let's go real quick through here. Um, let's uh, start uh, with uh, you, Ishikawa. Uh, what is going to be your approach, uh, your trait and skill, and what does it kind of look like? He was honest with them that this is not good. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he, he also is being betrayed. So I think honesty is the trait here. And he will be using weaponry. However, he is using his main katana with the magical blade strapped to his back. Not even drawing it, huh? Uh, yeah, and so he's, he's sweeping that around as several of them come around, and he's doing the scabbarded blade attacks that are his forte now. Awesome. That means that you're going to get an extra die for first skill in the scene Yay. and an extra die for flare, uh, and you can roll that and calculate your raises. Um, what uh, about you, Akiyama? Um, so one, uh, how many of these soldiers are there approximately or sailors and what kind of weapons do they have on them? Oh, very basic sort of, okay. Some of them have, have small clubs. Some of them have hammers. Some of them have blades, like little short blades, things like that. The usual sort of, uh, uh, uh crew armaments there. Um, cool. none of them have any kind of, of, uh, since gunpowder isn't used for pistols around here, they don't have anything like that. All right. Then I think maybe there's like a, a few stacks of crates around, and I'd like to kind of um, spring back up onto onto a crate and get kind of like a high ground as uh, Koinu and and Ishikawa kind of prepare to to hold the front line. I want to pull my knives out and start to try to pick off some of the targets that may be kind of like surrounding us to kind of cover as much area as possible. And I think I'm going to use honesty as well because uh, this offends my as a priest, as a Kanushi, right? Like this is a, a pure thing to do. Perfect. Uh, so, and you'll get an extra die for uh, the description and an extra die for first time for using aim in this scene. Um, and now go. You muted. Uh, I clicked the button, but it didn't work. Oh. Um, joyful, I think, and brawl. Um, yeah, I think she's she's happy to kick some ass if they are willing to serve themselves Perfect. up. All right, well let's uh, let's roll. Have you guys calculate your raises? Tell me if you're selling me any of the uh, your uh, your things there. Three seven. I've got five raises, no leftovers. Okay. Um, and we get one bonus die. Yes. And all right. Well, one bonus die for skill and one bonus die for the first time in the scene. So, all right. So, two bonus dice. Yes. Okay, cool. I have no dice to sell you. Damn it. Where's my danger pool when I need it? <laughs> it's somewhere where my hero points went. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> one. You get one, so I have one extra die and I have five raises. Okay. Uh, do you want to sell me that die? Yeah, sure. Let's make it interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, and how many raises did you get, Rich? Seven. Holy Capoli. I rolled two fifteens. So wow. okay. Killer. All right, um, Kenshin. I'll just leave this to you. Yes. <laughs> I was so, like, holy crap. You are first then, Ishikawa. There are three 
of these brute squads of uh, you know five strength each coming in, um, and uh, then uh, there are uh, there is this captain who looks like he's better trained and certainly a, 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 a skilled swordsman. Cool. Um, just looking at the. Oh, I'm trying to find the dueling rules. Dang it. They're not in our stuff. Oh, Aren't they in the, the folder? Um, maybe, but we're not linked to the folder. So I can fix that, oh. though. I've got it. I've got it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I think it's just going to go with a slash. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, sounds good. Uh, that'll cost you one raise. And how many wounds does that do? Uh, if that does his swordsmanship, which I think it does, that will be four. Or his weaponry, and uh, then it's four. There we are. I found the Katai dueling again. All right. Yep. Uh, wounds equal to ranks and weaponry. There we go. Um... All right. He is going to spend uh, a raise to counter. Um, so uh, he will take one wound. Uh, uh, from uh, the slash that you do, and uh, he will deal uh, a three wounds to you. Nice. But that cost him a Essentially, you bring that in, you come up, and he's fast. And he does bring that up to knock it aside. Um, and that happens on seven. You're still going first. We're on six now. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll be quick. Um And um, let's see. Yeah. So I think the next thing that happens is that. Yeah, there we go. So he deals a, a very quick slash. And what Ishikawa does is he. He ducks around with the blow, comes up with the sword on either. And he just lets go and punches him with a bash. Right in the face. Oh, All right, another raise. Uh, so he takes an, he one. takes a wound, another wound from that, um, uh, and you're going to do more the next time that you. No, uh, the bash the reduces the damage he does to me. Okay, so that's on six. We go to five. Uh, so uh, we're going to start with uh, Naoko uh, on this one. Uh, what do you okay. want to do? Um, so there's still some underlings to take care of, hey? There are three groups of five, three brute squads of five persons. I've got each. one group, you got two groups. We got each have a group. And, okay. and a captain. <laughs> and a captain, yeah. But I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I have a move about sizing up squads or something. Oh, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. I thought I was like... Maybe not. Okay, well, um, what I'm thinking about doing is like jumping onto the table and I imagine there's like a bunch of bowls and spoons and stuff like that. So as they rush at us, like one of the groups, I kick the bowls at their faces and then leap up and come crashing down with my staff onto the head of one of them. All right, are, uh, are you doing a maneuver or you just want to spend ranks? You've got... Uh... I believe slash is your big combat maneuver. Yeah, I have slash parry and I have counter maneuvers. Okay. As if I was a duelist, but I think I'm restricted to those ones. So I think I will just slash him. Okay. Um, I have it up here when you perform slash deal a number of wounds equal to your ranks and weapon. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. So how many ranks do you deal to this group? Um, but it would be brawl instead of it, right? Because yep. I'm a student of so four. Okay. So. You come down in this group of five. They're, they're running at you. They've got hammers. You go leaping. Um, uh, and I assume they go flying. Okay. Um, probably a few flip overboard, uh, flung by your attacks. Um, and there's only one left who's coming in at you. But yeah, you boom, 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 boom. And four of them are down. Ba bam. Um, uh, next on five, uh, Akiyama. So I want to I want to use fish in a barrel here. Um, 
So it says I can spend a race to reduce the strength of a brute squad by your ranks in the trait you used for your approach, which was three. Okay. Does that sound useful in this situation? Like I'm still not sure about the ranks of a or the strength of a brute squad. Like what's so right now it's a strength five. Uh, these other two brute squads, which means they do five wounds if they uh, get to act. Okay. So, um, yeah, I definitely like to bring down uh, one of their strength to, to two. And okay. I guess the way that looks is I'm up on I'm up on top of this crate and I've got, you know, a whole belt full of knives. And I think, you know, we're trading one-liners with the captain, right? So it's just like, uh, you know, uh, kings of the sea you may be, but you still have not learned the wisdom of the water kamoi. And I'm just like very, very cool and flowing in my like throwing of these knives because you know they spent all this time out here and that's what <laughs> so yeah uh the the three three of them of that five come rushing forward and the the knives catch them oh and they'll drop to the to the deck um of course thrown around as the 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 waves hit up and then uh tilt back down um and uh, uh ishikawa on five all right, on five, let's see, I've already reduced their ability to hurt me. So this time, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to finish them off with a slash. I think that another solid slash here should win all these guys down. If they try uh, to onto the, the captain or one of the brute squads? It's the captain who hurt before, who hurt me before? Yes. Oh, great. Yeah, no, I'll just do a lunge on the captain. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, you do the lunge. Um, he's already done counter, so uh, he will have to spend it to do a parry on that. How many? What did you spend on that? Um, uh, well, I have to spend all of my remaining raises. So that would be five. Okay. And then my ranks of weaponry add on for four, so nine. Nine. And he subtracts three from that, so that's six. So he gets that parry up. And um, actually, it says these wounds can't be reduced or prevented. I don't know if that means they can't be parried. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that means it can't be parried. So he comes up to do the, the parry to, to bring that in and stop you. Um, and describe what, what happens there. Ah, uh, so... He comes forward with a slash. He brings it up for a, a parry. And Ishikawa then uh, allows the weapon to go with, but his wrists pivot. Or he, he basically he flexes his wrists and then brings it across because the, the parry had to throw his weight. And so he brings it straight across. You can hear the crunch of his ribs. Um, and it's, it's a savage blow that it takes his breath away. And and he will will drop and and cry out, um, and when he does and he falls, um, you hear angry shouting from uh, the other sailors gathered there, and another mass. I'm going to spend my danger point. Another mass of them comes rushing forward, twice as large as the other groups. Uh, as they come running to avenge their captain. Nice. Um, and so that was on five. Um, I think all of you just spent, uh, well, you you spent all your stuff, right, Rich? So you are done. Um, so we're going to come to four here. Um, I need to roll for this new group. Um, give me one second here. they do that so on four um it you see ishikawa puts his all in and cuts that captain down that crack you hear it across even over the sound of the the tossing waves and the the the, the uh blowing breeze here um you've got now a big group of a brute squad um you've got a, a five-man group that's by you and probably that one and two will will consolidate into uh, a, a three-person group there. So what do you want to do now? Um, 
Uh, I think we'll start as we did last time with Naoko. Let's see. Um, so I have slash, I have parry. And you just and did have, slash, so you can't I, do that maneuver uh, in the next action. And then I have uh, a counter if applicable, it seems like, but I don't have access to the other moves, right? Right. Okay. Um, I think, and but but if if uh, Ishikawa gets attacked, it, it looks like out of turn I could parry that, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll spend one raise to to do fighting. Okay. <laughs> On them, yeah. uh, so all it does, so what it is is because it's not a maneuver, you spend a raise and uh, you will reduce the strength of one of the targets. Um, gotcha. So do you want to reduce the, the 10, the 5, or the three-person group? Uh, whichever one is coming for Ishikawa. As Probably the three-person group is the closest. So, yeah, you cool. can can uh, reduce that down to two. Um, cool. And uh, then uh, next on four is uh, uh, Akiyama. So if Naoko just spent one to deal a wound to that group, I think this would be cool if we kind of get the an overhead shot of Ishikawa kind of finishing up his duel with the captain and dealing that death blow. And then these guys are kind of rushing and like we, our teamwork is so good at this point that they might like have gotten to him, but Naoko intercepts one of them and then the other two just like find blades in their backs kind of and fall before they can reach him. So you want to spend... Um, so I'd like to spend two. Okay. So that will, will drop uh, them. Okay. Um, so that puts you on how many raises now? I'm on two. Okay, you're on two, and I believe that you're on three, Fraser. Yeah. Who's okay. on first base? <laughs> <laughs> um, so on four, uh, the uh, uh, the the group of ten are moving up, closing. That's their race to spend to get up there, um, and then we go to three. So right now, when it comes to you on three, Anelko. Uh, there's a group of five and a group of ten. And just to clarify, if that group of ten hits, they'll deal ten wounds before armor or whatever? Yes. Uh, what will happen is they'll spend a raise to set up to do that damage, and then on their next raise that they spend will actually deal that damage. Okay. And does the setup like set the amount, or like do we have to reduce the number before they set up, or before they actually deal the damage? So uh, what you can do is, let's say that this ten-person group attacks, just to kind of break it down. What Naoko can do is, let's say that they did that as they're going to on three, set up to do ten points. Naoko could, on uh, her action, spend a raise to interrupt that, to oh. keep them from activating that. Okay. Or could attack to reduce the, their numbers and the uh, and do less damage, right. um, but essentially any time a brute squad sets up, you can always spend a raise to interrupt it. It just eats up your your go. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Whoever is closest, then I'm gonna gonna be sweeping forward with my staff, making like large arcs in the rain to. Uh, kind of keep them at arm's length, but also when any of them get brave, then that's the one that gets knocked in the in the head. Okay, so let's say let's say on three, you essentially the brute squad goes to set up. This ten persons come up, and you get in the middle of them, and you are driving them back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're trying to to get organized, but they can't. the The group of five on three is is going to get set up. Uh, to do damage. Um, yeah. Now we go to two. And you guys both go on two. You go before the brute squads. One of them is set up to do damage. The other one is going to try and set up again. Uh, so, Akiyama, let's start with you this time. Cool. So, um, I think I'd like to to interrupt the the attack here. Five is a lot. And I think... The way, if we could flavor it this way, just because Koinu's helping me out with this stuff, but I'm still using aim, what I'd like to do is have a barrel that's kind of turned over. I'd like uh -huh. to kick it so it rolls over towards Koinu. And Koinu up to this point has been kind of like held back by some guys with maybe like long pointy weapons or something. And mm -hmm. she's been sick, right? So 
what she sees the barrel coming and just swats it at them and it just like bowls some of them over so they're uh oh, yeah. bowls comes flying through them hits the side of the thing and it shatters of course and uh uh you know grain alcohol goes flying everywhere um uh on that on two and then what about uh uh, uh naoko on two um i'm just seeing if I wonder if it would be wise to. No. As far as, guess... as far as strategy goes, I think it'd be good to get Ishikawa in back in as soon as possible. But I guess then we just give them a lot of chances to do stuff. I'm trying to think like what's the best course of. of yeah, yeah. It's I'm all good. Look... I have no problems with Ishikawa gets beat up for being so, so bullheaded about going after the leader, <laughs> thinking they'll just fold. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll um, spend a raise to reduce one of the sizes and then okay. um i think the next role i'll use a hero point to add three dice to to your role akiyama i think that would be for good. the next turn yeah you can do that yeah um so then on two uh you bat one of this 10 person group down yeah like one guy just gets too close and i just beat him okay but um so <laughs> they will uh uh spend their action setting up again um getting they essentially they rush in on you trying to get and push you back so they can maybe throw you overboard that's what they're trying to do that's the opportunity now they don't want to do damage they want to throw you overboard um because they're figuring you can't swim and uh then the other group is who was disrupted last time is is setting up um so that, uh that was the end of two on one, uh, 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 Nyoko, um, uh, you can spend a raise to interrupt them. Yeah, interrupt, uh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. how, how do you get out of that when they go? I mean, they grab you, and they're running you over towards the edge, and they're kind of pushing you, are going to throw you off. There's, there's nine of these sailors. Yeah. What happens? I think they charge me, and it's by a masthead, and I jump up, and, uh, like, I jump... Uh, like I'd run up it and then flip behind them. So they no, charge they right past me. Go turn around. Um, uh, and then what about you, Akiyama? How do I avoid um, getting picked up and tossed over, you mean? Or yes. What uh, you can, you can uh, reduce the damage. Uh, you can reduce these guys by one, or you can stop them from dealing damage. I mean, f five, five is a lot. I feel like uh, with, with one just one raise left, it's probably worth just interrupting um so, so i think maybe i've i think i've run out of knives at this point and i think i'm just pulling like uh implements and bottles and stuff off of tables and just like uh tossing them at, at, at people and like cracking skulls with those as best i can all right yeah. all right uh so I that'll go flying uh so just to tell you now um uh, uh in terms of what's what's available of course there are ropes there's rigging um, there's candles, there's food, there's grain alcohol on the deck. Uh, there's the pitching of the I ship. Know. These are all things to do interesting opportunities with that you can do. Um, uh, so you've knocked them back. Let's go to the next round. Uh, okay. actions okay. and rolling. Yes. I'm going to spend a hero point actually to, to give three more dice to Ishikawa then. Perfect. Ooh, I want wow. you to have like 10 raises. <laughs> <laughs> All we'll, of the see, races. we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Uh, I'll need, I need to. I need to help you out too. All right. Let me roll for my. Um. Ooh, nice brute squad. I don't know. I'm still struggling a little bit with traits. Like I, I think she would be like pissed or something, but not allowed like, to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't it's not wisdom, it's not respect. That's you could sure. feel disrespected and because of that lack of respect you're angry at the sailors. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I like to imagine that it that that I mean the fiction of it is you can work it in a lot of different ways there. Yeah, sure. you can kind of oh. think of the inverse sort of of each one of them as sort of like the negative aspect of that trait. Oh right. That's a good way to look at it. Sure, I'll I'll do respect then because yeah, they're definitely not being um, respectable in their fight. They just like mass together and try to use numbers. So that's pretty pathetic. And um, I didn't notice last time, but I think I get an extra die 
uh, it seems, because it says here, um, where is it? You gain one bonus die when you make a brawling risk to punch, kick, headbutt, or otherwise inj injure another character. Yeah, looks like it. So, yeah. Bonus. Right on. Um, I think that I... So, Fraser, you spent your hero point on Ishikawa, right? Not uh, Akiyama? That's fine. I'm just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Don't forget your haymaker um, ability, too. Yeah. So I think if they've kind of... Uh, did you say they're trying to push us towards overboard, I guess? Yeah, they, they're, they're now more concerned about throwing you guys overboard. Right, okay. So I think me and Koinu are sort of like backed up maybe towards the, the, the edge, one of the edges. And I think it's mysticism time. And I think <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, I think um, it's wisdom here um, because the water uh, Kamoi are all about learning and wisdom and stuff like that. And I think these, these brutes are being very unlearned by daring to attack <laughs> a, a lady of such noble stature as myself. With Koinu kind of fending them off, I want to concentrate for a moment and call forth like a wave to just wash these guys. Um, or, Perfect. Yeah, so that that sounds. I'll give you two bonus dice for that. Cool. Uh, Naoko, what about you? Um, describe to me your your choice of actions this round. Um, yeah, I think she spits on the ground, um, showing that she's been disrespected and she will not be like push back like a common thief like them and she sort of does uh you know like a really cool monk pose with her staff saying like i'm gonna fuck you up soon <laughs> uh so going for brawl again yes okay and so you get one die for flare but no extra dice for because you already use that skill in the scene right yeah um, but I got two, four, six, eight raises. <laughs> raises. Oh. Ishikawa, tell me what you yeah. do. <clears throat> uh, so they, one question, did I take damage last round or did they cover my back? Like they, they got you, they, they covered wow. you essentially. Okay. You, Cause I started marking are... damage. Then I was like, wait, I think they saved my bacon. Oh yeah. No, they didn't do any damage to you. Yeah, um, so they got in the way as you were kind of pulling back from uh, uh, having spent your energy on that captain. Beautiful. Uh, I really like the overhead shot of like the waves of guys running in one at a time and Naoko just taking one out and a knife in the other one, right? Just like Ishikawa dueling. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, so the intent at this time is <clears throat> a bunch of guys trying to overwhelm him and what he has done is I, maybe he's just a little inspired by Naoko's uh, wuxia ability, but he grabs by the scruff of the neck, the captain, pulls him up in front of him and uses him a couple of times, guiding him with the katana to take a few shots from some of his men. And he, he's dancing back along the deck and the, you know, the, the wave comes and makes it nice and, and slick and wet but he is agile and he is basically improvising with his katana and the captain so i'm gonna go with weaponry here makes sense and so yeah that's what i'm doing and he is uh he, he's realized it's a little wise not to spend everything on just taking down the captain here so the captain Wait, is um, probably probably the late captain yeah, it's not good. Oh well, I tried. Uh, so that's there we go, and uh, I got six raises this time. So six raises. Good. All right. Um, so even with the three extra dice, Rich. Yeah, I rolled two ones, two twos, a three, two sixes. You can... A lot of bad rolls. Oh, by the way, would you like to give me a hero point? I will sell you a one. Oh, but you oh. can re-roll a die, too, with a skill, right? Oh, okay. re-roll one die, then. Um, Damn it. Yeah, it didn't help. <laughs> oh, so okay. I'll sell you, I'll sell you uh, a die there, sir, for a hero point, okay. please. I'll give you a hero point. I'll gladly you pay you two, two, two for a hero point. <laughs> <laughs> Lola, I've got six raises, and I will also sell you a hero point if you will take that deal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Our, guys, how many guys are in this ship? Come on, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> 
the ship gets like hit by lightning. Now what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a use for this point, so don't worry. Those are my move, essentially my move currency. So, um, all right. Uh, so, uh, you are going to go on nine, Naoko, and then your two companions go on six, and then the big group goes on six. Uh, two, four, six. Uh, I'm on eight. Eight. So eight, Naoko. Um, Let's have you begin. So it, it's a group of ten. Is it? Uh, nine now. Oh man! If only it was nine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or wait, no, I could still take them out with a headbutt, right? Because doesn't the headbutt do something plus my? Let's see. You can choose to spend all of your raises on your first action well, and inflict I'm a gonna, number of I'm gonna, to... uh, Realize that it's actually against a character, not a brute squad. Um. Oh, so I think that, if, this were, if this were a like a, a villain, that's a great thing for for eliminating their actions. Okay, um, slash is the main thing that I want to do. Then, right? That's my kind of like my my good action yeah. for that. Yeah. So okay. if you it costs you one raise, so you'll go yeah, to seven. I'll do that, and you can do four damage. Um, and I can't spend additional raises. I can't spend additional raises on that with the uh, um, uh, uh, dueling maneuvers. Okay, cool. Then um, I will just but, do that. But you're going to be able to do that in a moment. Um, so for one raise, you take out four of these guys. They've, 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 they've tried to push you off the boat. You've, they've leapt behind them. Tell me how you take out four, half of this group. So I think they charge at me to try to do this thing, and I, um, I'm still in my position, and I don't move, and it's disconcerting to them. I'm still in this, you know, martial arts pose, and then at just the right moment, it goes into like a slow motion panning camera thing with the drops of, you know, water coming down, and uh -huh. she does her like patented thing that she did before, where uh, she spins the the. Um, staff so fast that it cracks against the guy's head and it keeps maneuvering so it moves like across her neck and keeps like going crazy spinning just like that until it like knocks a we couple get, of them out. Get some some slow-mo shots of them flying back, their faces hit, blood going in the rain there as they go down. They crash to the wet uh, ground. Half of them are taken out and now on seven it's your action again. Ooh. So... I think some Wilhelm screams are going to be happening. <laughs> um, I want to take out the You could take out of... all of them. You could yeah. spend five raises and take all the rest out. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, Just like Ishikawa yeah, I th did. I think they get, <laughs> yeah, I think they get really uh, angry at this and they charge me. And that's when I like plant the staff so hard that it like goes through the, the decking. And she just goes into like a brawl boxer style and just starts um, like punching and kicking them um, Sano style from Kenshin. Perfect. Uh, sending them flying back, crashing to the ground. Uh, and, you know, there's a, a, a brief shot where, where we see you standing amongst this, this you know, pile of bodies scattered across the, the, the decking before you there. You're kind of pulling your staff up out of the, the deck. Um, Ishikawa on six. Okay. Um, so on six, what do we have left at this point? How much you do have you have? A group there? of five. Group of five. So if I were, yeah, okay. I think that they have been pursuing Ishikawa, or some of them have been pursuing Ishikawa across the deck, and he is going to spend a raise to effectively bash them with the captain or the captain's body. We're not entirely sure. Uh, so we'll spend that, which will give me uh, weaponry damage. So okay. Four to them. So you do four damage? I do. They go said, down. Said bash, I mean slash, sorry. Yeah. Um, Akiyama, there is one dude left. Yes. So, Bear. no, I, th I mean, I set up for mysticism on this one. And I think okay. um, even though a lot of these guys are knocked down and taken out, maybe this is kind of in combination with uh, 
Ishikawa's uh, maneuver kind of thing. But she basically wants to sweep the boat of all these sailors, um, right? So this is a command, um, commanding a Kamoi to perform an action, which uh, usually has consequences. Apparently, oh, yeah. water com water Kamoi know a great deal and are eager to share their wisdom, but only to those who are worthy. So while 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 Koinu is kind of like protecting her, she turns to the the sea and she she basically just says, um, "Kamoi, you know." aid me on my quest for knowledge regarding these powerful blades kind of thing. Like she's trying to prove that like her, her, her aim is worthy of it's a, it's a knowledge seeking quest. Right. So, and uh, she wants, she wants a, a, a yeah, go ahead. No, well, you uh, take it away. to just hit the deck and wash these ones who are kind of staying there, maybe trying to get up to, to get their second wind to come at you. And it will be just this wash of this wave of water that will send them flying off this. Whoa, whoa, more Wilhelm screams off in the distance as they go sailing off uh, into, into the water. And it'll kind of come crashing down um, as you guys kind of catch your breath. Um, and it's at that point that you'll hear boom, boom, boom. Gunpowders. Spend my danger points. Um, and you will see sh shoot over the deck. These three cannonballs come flying over. And one of them tears through the sail. And uh, you will see kind of have come out of this mist. Uh, you will see this ship. Um, they've, it's got cannons on the side, um, and you can see it's running, uh, the, the red and black, uh, sails of the pirates. Uh, and it has kind of come up alongside is turning and, uh, they fired this sort of warning cannonade across you. And let's take our break now and then we'll continue. Sounds good. Uh, how, how many minutes? Awesome. Uh, uh, 25, I think, was what we said last time. Oh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, let's, let's just call it. I'll, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Just, that's a great ending. We'll just click the end of the yeah. full three game session. <laughs> okay, see you soon.
This is great, Lil. I like I like action stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do wish I had those fight deck cards from Kyle. Though. <laughs> like, uh, I hit them and it hurts. <laughs> I have the uh, those combat description cards, oh. but they're really it's just, they're I mean it's just like uh, you know like you do damage you know piercing damage and then it gives you an, uh, a, a, a like an adjective for it. Um, and the information design on them is really bad. They're like really hard to use in play. And what system is that? It's just a generic thing that uh. they they did a Kickstarter for a few years ago. Oh yeah, but yeah. the information isn't good. That's not. Yeah, that's too bad. I'll see. I think I have the PDF of that. I'll I'll find that and send that to you. Yeah, the thing that I like about Kyle's game is that you. You draw the four cards and then you roll the dice and then you assign it so you know where you hit and where you block because you decide it. And then as mm -hmm. the player, you narrate it. So you just make it seem as cool as you want, but you know when you get hit or not. So I like that. So there is this, this moment the ship is kind of turned. There's uh, just a few of the crew from the vessel that you are on that are left here. Uh, the rest have been washed out into the ocean or have been dispatched in other ways. Um, and you will see that this pirate ship has come alongside. They're still at a distance. Um, you know, uh, uh, as they've kind of come up, they're definitely more armed than your vessel. Uh, and uh, you will see uh, the pirates, I mean, real, you know, cutlasses and, and straight blades and that kind of standing uh, at the ready. Um, and on the rigging that is on the side sort of facing towards you, you will see this woman uh, in kind of a, what looks like a black armor, has kind of scales on the shoulders. Uh, you can see she's got a kerchief uh, around her thing, like a sort of uh, a bandito mask. Um, and you can see that it's been painted and colored, and it looks like sort of shark's teeth. Cool. And uh, uh, she will yell across. And, of course, this is a, uh, a fantasy pirate movie, so you can hear what she has to say, even though the distance is absurd. Uh, yeah. And she will shout, I hope that you kind gentlemen aboard the tradesman will surrender without any further ado. We can come to an amicable arrangement should such things happen. Otherwise, and she'll gesture down towards the cannade, towards the cannons on the side, which is something... I do not want to have happen. Um, I say we like, okay, I have two minds. Either one, we blow this ship up, or two, we blow their ship up. <laughs> or both, that's fine too. But like you said that we had that stuff, uh, a flammable liquid, right? What if yeah, you like- the, the decks of, this, of the ship you're on uh, are covered with uh, alcohol that is spilled out. Which would float on the surface and then we could just pour it so that it goes across the water to their ship and then light it ablaze. <laughs> we just ambitious. heard, we, we heard her, we heard her talk over the storm. We know we could do this in the movie. <laughs> or... Ishikawa uh, skims along the deck and picks up the small pouch of coins that the captain had thrown him, what they had paid to book passage here, paid by a noble. And he offers it up and says, we would like to book passage with your ship. This crew, we've defeated them. I hesitantly stop pouring the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> she stops? 
and she she looks and there's some discussion there they they look down one of the people points down below and they they point at the bodies and the, the people swimming and she's like the bear comes into sight yeah and uh she'll she'll start laughing she just laughs and she goes yes absolutely grandfather uh, is it for real yeah she she bows and uh, she shouts to her men and she goes uh uh send a send a boat over for our our guests and uh, she says with this with formal uh uh hospitality and grace uh oh. in response to your request she says certainly grandfather come okay so she's like pulling out the honorifics and everything yeah okay well i start drinking the alcohol then okay and and they'll punt a little boat over to where you're at um and they'll also send uh some people over uh to start essentially getting the valuables off that ship um and uh, uh they'll the, yes as the boat comes over i look at it, she call him like anything you'd like to tell us <laughs> any other family coming <laughs> she is not related she is calling me old oh yeah which is <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I think, I, I think I just look, you know, look over to Ishikawa and say, uh, uh, if simple sailors were capable of robbing us blind and cutting our throats or not capable, but at least, uh, that was their intent, then we should be wary of a per repeat performance from pirates. But, uh, right. I agree. And uh, uh, the the couple of these these pirates kind of point and, and gesture, and they're going to, to to take you over to the other ship, even as their comrades are are stripping the good stuff off of this. And uh, you get the sense that they're probably going to any any survivors. They're just going to kind of put on the boat, and then they'll they'll let it go back out to sea. They don't particularly want to murder a bunch of people, and they don't particularly want to sink a ship because it might be valuable. It might come back again. Mm. So they they're stealing the ship. They steal having... they steal the stuff off the ship. Every fitting, every every book, everything that they can find, they are hauling over. Oh, but they're okay. not towing it. They're just going to leave it adrift. Just going to leave it on board. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, and she will will greet you as you come. She she does it with sort of the absolute formality that she finds kind of hilarious, uh, and yet is respectful to you ishikawa um and i've got a picture of her in the the clues and stuff thing yes it, it saddens me greatly that she called me grandfather i legit thought that it was like the granddaughter. <laughs> like a relative that's great yeah i thought it was like an honorific as in like actually the honorific for a actual grandfather like <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, ishikawa returns no the key is he plays a completely straight, knowing that she's laughing because she's a pirate, but she is honoring it, and therefore he will he will play it up. Like no hesitation. It is he is in this. He's he's pleased. And she'll pull down that uh bandana, kind of put it uh uh down, and she will say, I am a crazy shark. Uh please. Uh and uh She'll she'll gesture over to where essentially it looks like there are some uh, side rigging and seats and a, a short table and uh, she says you should come and your your bear. Mm. My bear is, is 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 part of the group here. You see, we we do not operate separately. I I I hope you understand. Is is it a person under a spell or is it an actual bear? You'll find out later on tonight. You get get me a few drinks, and maybe I'll tell you the story. Fair enough. Fair enough. She kind of leans in. You are a lovely one, and uh, she'll lean back uh, and she, more drinks. She's asked for more drinks, and she points at you. 
um, and uh, the, the the pirates will come over and begin to to set down. Looks like various stolen alcohols, you know, rums, rice wine, things like that. And uh, uh, this woman will will sit. Crazy Shark will sit, and she'll pour out, you know, in that sort of wild uh, pouring out onto these mismatched cups, and she'll say, "Drink." Yep. Thank you. Does the bear drink? <laughs> the bear. The bear has known to become a bit boisterous after a few drinks, but if you'd like to live on the edge, then Fair by enough. all means. Rice wine for the bear. And uh, she'll slug hers back. Naoko, do you drink? Um, I'm not really familiar enough with the culture to say one way or the other, so maybe just to be safe, no. No. She looks, she goes, oh, oh, are you a, are you a monk? I I was, yes. Was? Well, if you're was, that means you was the person who couldn't drink. And now you were, which means are, the person who can drink now. She slides a drink over towards you. <laughs> uh, Her logic is infallible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It is, a, it is a way of life, not a, a station. So uh, as much as I would like to, and I just push it back <laughs> fair enough more for the bear and uh uh so i i must know the story uh, what 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 is this uh wh which story is it that you speak of my my lady uh crazy shark will do Uh, she would say, well, uh, who are you? Uh, and uh, how did you come to be uh, set upon upon the ship that you were voyaging on? And perhaps how you managed to dispatch uh, uh, a crew, a weak crew, but a crew nonetheless. Is she addressing me or is she addressing oh, She's the crew? looking at all of you for someone to speak. Um, well, yeah, I mean, would, I, I feel like I would probably look to Ish Ishikawa in this situation as kind of, um, he, he, he would most bluntly state what our purpose is. And I don't want to give away too much that we don't have to. So sure. the fact that Akiyama was referred to as lovely, uh, that's why Ishikawa was waiting to see if you would carry the conversation. But <laughs> uh, okay. if, if there's a silence, he will say, we are chasing after an evil magistrate. Oh, aren't all magistrates evil? Indeed. But this one, this one wishes to bring harm to more than just the people that they take taxes from. All of Fuso is in danger because of Horyu. Mm-hmm. But you're headed towards, towards Han. Ah, you are... You are correct. He is escaping. We are chasing him. Uh, you are are dedicated. If you would chase a a, a a wicked magistrate across across the sea, he has stolen an object of great value, and he is somewhere among the Han. Out of character, like. He is right. That's where yeah. we're going, right? Yeah. <laughs> no you get the name I, of a, a an official and and stuff like that. I think yes. I, I, I but I butt in and I would say, um, uh, a man as mad as this magistrate could only find company of a king that's equally as mad. Uh, well, if you go to Han, uh, certainly uh, uh, King Yongdo is uh, is uh, well. Uh, mad is an understatement, but is that mad? Good? He may be, but uh, mad or even even worse, he may be. But he is still obviously incapable of ruling a country. His his province has been absor absorbed by the Shenzhou Empire. He uh, da, he is da, not fit da, to da, rule. Da, da. I I am from Han. 
So you can you can hold back a little bit on uh, those right. statements, Malfuso and Lady. I'm sorry, my comments were not directed to you or your heritage, merely the leadership abilities of your mad ruler. Uh, do you, are you are you allied with him? Do you speak for him? I do not speak for that king. We are a mixed crew, many of us driven out of Han by various uh, various actions by the king and other wicked ministers thrown to the outside. Well, then you should find no qualm with my words that he has not done his duties. If you wish to say that about the king, I have no problem. But the way you said it before, I still am of the Han. And I would not mock you, lovely lady, for your Fusoan heritage. So tactful, she says. I apologize. For one name crazy, you do have a silver tongue, more than I'd expected. See, young lady, you are young because you throw out that kind of line and I will not rise to that particular bait. But shark will do, not crazy. So where do you head then? Um, to the, is she asking or are you asking? I'm going to Mintoon, right? Yeah, the, that's the name of the person. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, we're going. We're going to the Han. But is she asking us where we're going, yeah, or absolutely. you yeah, as a she's GM asking, you. asking the players? Oh, okay. Um, then yeah, we would like to be taken as close to, you know, the the Han province as as possible. Han is large. Do you mean the capital or somewhere else? Wherever me as the player should know <laughs> where we're going that's where I, I um i think we might like i might like shoot back like um uh you're pirates you're familiar with corruption you take us where you think that a uh a corrupt magistrate such as this hario might might flee to upon arriving to han there are any number of officials he might have bribed we know the official right so just wherever the uh, Minjun is, right? Minjun. Oh, well, we're actually uh, we're actually going to meet Admiral uh, Jihu, but I didn't necessarily want to uh, throw out like the name and a lot of the information. I was kind of just trying to be like, take us where all the corruption happens. But she's not playing my game anymore. See, Naoko, she looks at Naoko. It's it's Minjun that you you seek. Yes. And I just shoot daggers. <laughs> Well, I can take you to where Minjun lies. There you go. And I shoot daggers back. <laughs> now what you Thank say? You. He is he has hung many of my fellows of my trade. Uh, he has a uh, uh, a fortress estate on an island offshore with vessels there. Um, well, perhaps you want retribution for the lives lost as well, then. That might be. That's an interesting idea. I kind of like the way you think. Does the bear so, talk at any point, By she says? <laughs> uh, you'll need a lot more rice wine before that happens. More wine for the bear. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a um, friend of Min Jun, and if you are intending to cause him problems, then I will gladly turn my course towards his castle. Now, you said ships. Does he have a fleet at his command? He has a few ships. I will have to go in under cover of dark to drop you. Well, we do have a contact that may be able to provide us a little more brute force, if that's the angle you'd like to take. But I'm also open to subterfuge. Both sound... <laughs> Who is your like, ally? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say who. And I, um, I think I say, um, uh, I say, um, shark. Then I am the daughter of the Green Mountain Clan Nispa. You understand? Even um, in even in the Han uh, Han province, I have I have uh, contacts. I have friends. My 
you see my heritage can 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 provide us many opportunities that would otherwise not be available in such a place so you're saying to me that you're worth quite a lot oh i thought you already knew that well i'm i'm, a, I'm assessing things now what are you assessing exactly and i'm drunk now <laughs> And if she turns to you, at Ishikawa, and she will say, I can drop you on shore and you can find your way in the courts of the Han, or I can take you to the one you want. I do not like wasting time. I would like to go to where we can find Minjun and therefore the evil magistrate Horio. What do you need? In exchange, this should be a fair and equitable exchange. She says, if you are courageous enough to break into that fortress to do what you need to do, then I will go along with you. My vessel will wait offshore. Now, all of this is provided you have, will, will grant me the permission to perhaps pick up a few things while we are uh, uh, engaged in said operations. Uh, Ishikawa would just check in with Naoko and Akiyama to see if they have any objection to that, but he obviously doesn't. Yeah. Uh... A horrible person like that needs to be, be relieved of all their possessions anyway. I don't like the way you think, monk. <laughs> Those funds were not acquired by any means, uh, uh, any honorable means. And she will, will lean in. She go, no, they weren't. Leans real close. And she goes, ah, you're a little drunk now, aren't you? pity and she'll stand up and she'll say my men will take you to rooms where you can uh, rest and uh, I will turn the vessel aside uh, it will take a day to travel there we'll arrive tomorrow at nightfall uh, you, any Chris. point she uh, crazy shark points to to you Ishikawa and will say you can assist your in finding the quarters. Hmm. I Thank say, you. I say, I object to my lady. Um, I may be, I may be a little bit loose lipped, but there has not nearly been enough wine and Koinu is not nearly ready to talk to you yet. She says, that said, I'm glad you approve of our, uh, rather direct approach and there's a lot of intent in her in her stare kind of at, at that but um, she'll, she'll nod she looks at you you've had alcohol you're young uh, I'm flushed. your cheeks are red um uh, uh my, my my friend gene who's korean uh, when he drinks he just gets red cheeked and and super 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 drunk super fast and uh um, yep uh, so uh, she will will send you you off, and no fan uh, service for you, Hakiyama. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably the 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 shot the next morning is of the bear at the side of the ship. <laughs> I'm just patting her on the back, like I'm sorry, and I'm also really hungover too. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I might join too. <laughs> Now, Nako is look is like, look, the bear is finally talking and starts chuckling <laughs> rice in her mouth. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And so we cut to the moon in the sky. Dark cloud passes over it. Small boat. Guys rowing quietly in. So the castle itself is a rocky sort of island with the tower kind of 
up, built on it. Um, it's kind of a, a, a steep wall, or you can kind of come around uh, the main side. There is a small port with a couple of small ships there, and there are some lights on uh, in the castle. So she will row you quietly in. And this is what we call a dramatic scene. Um, so this is kind of a sequence where you guys are going to, to, to figure out about how you want to break in, what skills you're going to use to do that, and essentially you're going to generate raises that you can spend to do things. Oh. Um, so in this sequence, in the, the break-in, um, what what is your primary uh, skill you're going to be putting to use there, uh, Naoko? Uh, Maybe notice. Okay. Uh, so you are focusing on being the watch person, the keeping the eye out, spotting things. Okay. Yeah. What yeah, would you say uh, the scope of this role is? Like how far is this going to cover? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go and uh, we'll kind of spend through, uh, you know, uh, you know, to spend for opportunities, spend to avoid guards, spend to say, oh, we get to this place, that kind of thing. Um, okay. And maybe I'll put some challenges in front of you to, to eat up some of that. And, and once we get to a point, we may, may go for another role when the, the scene kind of shifts there. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think it's notice, and I think Naoko is um, excited about it. So I think joyful. I think okay. she is. She's she's living for it, especially since she's getting a um, closer to like a kind of retribution that's been out of her hands for a long time. Perfect. There are all kinds of skills could be used here: scholarship to know the layout of a castle, uh, athletics. Uh, for climbing, uh, warfare for knowing approaches, um, uh, 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 attempt or even uh, convince to kind of talk your way past things. Um, there are all, all kinds of things that you can do. Hmm. Uh, so Akiyama, what, what do you want to do? Um, real quick, so we have been told that this island is where Minjun uh, stays do we do we know like what else is here generally like whose dwelling is this primarily this is uh, uh so minjun is a uh, a minister and and we'll cut to a scene of her kind of having drawn out the castle crudely and she's pointing and she'll say minjun is a minister who has worked his way up and has been granted this castle as his sort of private estate uh he uses this for his gatherings and parties um, uh, it will be able to tell if his boat is there, if he is present. Um, and if he is, then undoubtedly your friend, air quotes, uh, is there as well. Um, so there'll be a guard staff. He might have a few guests. Um, he'll, he'll definitely have guards, um, and probably his household will be present. Does that answer your question? That does. That's perfect. Okay. Um, I believe I will be using scholarship, and I think I'm not exactly sure what to use here. I, I think I'll use respect for my trait. What I'm kind of calling on is like um, Akiyama's history at visiting the estates and houses of other noble folk and knowing the layout and you know where they might station guards, how routines might work, and uh, also the uh, like the the layout of the estate itself. Like I might know where certain places are and houses that we could use for cover and stuff like that. Perfect. Perfect. And again, uh, for both of you, give yourself the two extra bonus dice, one for first time using the skill in the scene and one for the flair of what you described. And uh, Ishikawa. Ishikawa has a few sheaths of paper and with uh, a, a piece of uh, like charcoal, maybe. He's drawing out what he sees and and imagining the interior that would support each of that and, and using his knowledge of warfare as to how this castle would be the most impregnable and what would be the weak spots. 
uh, and uh, perfect. He's hoping to be wise in this way. That sounds like like wisdom and warfare. Give yourself your extra extra dice on that. So I've got three raises and an extra die, which I would love to sell to you. Okay. I have two raises. Okay. But uh, that gives me a bargain basement ability to sell you two dice, sir. Make okay. it as dangerous as possible. Oh, no. <laughs> Perfect. And Naoko? Um, I have four raises, and I'm not going to sell you a tie. <laughs> More's the pity. Yeah. So let, let's start with Naoko. Um, how is it uh, that you... Let's spend your first raise. How is it that you get... Kind of lead the group in this first leg up onto this into this fortress? Um, I'm thinking we're coming up on a on that boat, and maybe I notice an alternate way in that is, or a route that is less patrolled. Since I'm using notice, okay. What does it look like? Why why is it less patrolled? Uh, maybe it is just a little bit of a hazardous outcropping, so the guards pretend to patrol here, but don't go there because they're afraid of falling in. Yeah, it's it's a route that kind of comes around the side on the sea side where where the drop down the you know the whoosh of the the waves hit against it and uh, you know there's a maybe one rope as a guide there and yeah. uh, uh, they yeah, definitely like avoid it. One like there we wait for the the one patrol guard who does come here and like the camera shows him saying like nobody would be crazy enough to come this way <laughs> not going <laughs> up there no one would go up that way yeah, that's that's loco and so we cut to you three uh um plus uh, uh crazy shark um uh moving alongside under cover of darkness moving from shadow to shadow making your way up along this wet stairway the 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 uh, sp ocean spray will hit against you, kind of damp. There's that slick rock, probably sh shot of you kind of grabbing on to make sure you don't slip. Um, and then going up and you can find a, a, a door uh, in. Um, so Akiyama, now uh, what do you want to spend your rays on? What What's the next part? What's the next thing that happens here? Um, so I think that um, upon... So, so we've reached we've reached the top of is the is the the castle and the manor in view now. Yeah, you're actually up, and you've come to uh, around uh, and a door where you can enter into the castle. Okay, cool. Um, I think that uh, it's it's a ritual or a tradition that um, the layout of a of a courtyard and of the um, so basically as, as the um, they place the buildings in a courtyard um, in corresponding to which one receives the most sunlight is where the higher ranking members would stay. It's 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 something to do with like the faith or something like that. It's perfect. Um, and uh, like the light and shadow thing. So I think we'd have a good idea of, you know, uh, Minjun might be staying and where they might keep prisoners, where the servants quarters might be, where the soldiers might stay based on that. Yeah, so that's actually one of the sort of the two major obstacles that you guys have. One is sort of finding your way around, which I'm going to say is you're going to have to spend two raises total to overcome that, and then two raises to avoid the guards. Uh, so you've spent one of your raises towards finding your way around, and you kind of spot things uh, and, and do that. Um, uh, uh, Ishikawa, what do you want to spend a raise on? I'll specifically try to. Uh, there's a moment when we'll say the crazy shark is about to step into a hallway and he reaches to 
for a moment and does it can just see around the corner like he cuts the pie and you can just see Ishikawa's eye and he pulls everybody back into the shadows and he'll spend one two we need to spend two to avoid the guard so I will yeah. go ahead and spend uh, for that you want to spend both of yours or you want to spend yes. just one towards that I'll spend both yeah. um so yeah so you are are watching carefully spotting and it's it's Ishikawa that knows how guards operate it's Ishikawa that that gets you around that um that leaves you guys with uh I believe uh Naoko still has three raises Akiyama has two there's two uh there's one raise left that you need to spend to find your way around and then the rest you could spend to to like activate opportunities Things that happen, good luck, things you overhear, things you find out. Mm. I can spend the one to, to get around then. Okay. Uh, and what does that look like? Um, maybe what happens is we all sort of do the, the wuxia up to... There's like that long bridge sort of Harry Potter style, except it's... Uh, whatchamacallit? like stone masonry and stuff instead of wood and mm -hmm. we shot up on top of it and there's like a shot of the guards walking underneath us and we're just like silently running atop to uh to the proper end of the keep awesome so you guys are in the castle you're moving around um uh so uh you uh naoko and uh, akiyama you guys are are in like flynn and you guys still have some raises to spend. So what do you want to spend those to do? Find the dude. Okay. So you're going to spend a raise. So what do you think happens? What do you overhear? What do you see that points you in the right direction? Uh, maybe they're having a heated argument and we overhear them. Yeah, like a couple of the guards are arguing about, oh, that foreigner, that Fuso. He, ugh, God, when they're arguing, he's up with the master and, and the lieutenant and fondling over some blade that they brought. Um, and uh, that the Fuso and he keeps grabbing at the servants and they're, they're, they're kind of angry about that, 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 um, uh, that sort of uh, uh, is, is bothersome, but they point up to one of the upper uh, areas. It's clearly the, the quarters where uh, minister Minjun and uh, Horio and, maybe a couple of other people are up there with the blade. So you'll get that uh, with that spend. So you still got a raise left and Akiyama, you still get two raises left. Um, maybe, some, maybe something that I could do is as we're kind of heading towards that wing of the, of the castle, I would, I would sort of know where um, guards might be stationed in relation to where like the bedrooms would be and stuff like that. So that, Maybe as we're kind of preparing and setting up to kind of break in there, we could have somebody on point maybe prepared to take out guards from the direction that I think they might come in. And Crazy Shark will say, if you say that's where they're coming from, I will go and I will make sure those doors are locked so that if things go down, they can't get to there. Oh, that's crazy. I'd say locked works, but dead might be better. It's your call. Locked is sufficient. Yeah, you are right. these people get these people get paid coin. They're assholes, but they're working. But I like a little bit of ruthlessness. That's that's not entirely unattractive. I will admit, I'm a little on edge right now. There's a lot of people in this building, and a lot of them are trained. But I have faith. And you got a bear, and she'll take off. Um, I, speaking of all these wuxia moves, do I have a bear? Was did our, could our bear wuxia up with us? Like, oh yeah, I don't absolutely. Know. This is this is this is a game. Um, I'm not going to make it more difficult that you have have a, 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 a an advantage. Maybe maybe at one point we're about to get back into get into the castle. I sort of like noticed a doorway and motion coin you to go over there. And then we, I just like walked around and opened up a door for her to like come in with us. So she didn't have to like jump up onto the next level or something. Okay. There's, there's lots of moments of you having to, to double back to, to let the bear in. 
is probably at least one port point. There has to be a point where Konya has to freeze like it's a stuffed bear and the guards have to walk <laughs> by, right. that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so you guys both have a... Uh, 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 you both have uh, a raise left. You've made your way through the castle. You've avoided the guards, kind of found your way up. You've gotten up to the suites where the minister is at, where he's meeting. You can hear him laughing. There's there's raucous talk in there. Sounds like there's servants serving them food and drink. Um, Crazy Shark has gone off to, to lock the path so that if noise occurs, uh, brute squads of guards can't, can't make their way up. And... Uh, uh, you've got two races left, so how do you want to use those to set yourselves up? You've got one, Naoko, and you've got one, Akiyama. Hmm. How do you make this easier for yourself? Perhaps some kind of distraction, Rich? Like, like what know. kind of distraction? Maybe. What do you notice... That serves as a distraction. Maybe we. I'm trying to think of something to do with the um, that would set the servants even more like uh, off the pre precipice of being annoyed to very angry and like causing some kind of ruckus or a fight, like to. If there's a Make kitchen the nearby, maybe we could like start a fire in there and they have to go attend to it. Like something's burning. Yeah, like a grease fire or something like that. Okay. And I think that uh, uh, one spin can be to actually get like those servants that are kind of innocents out of the way. Oh, sure. So that, yeah. that a fire starts, you can spend one of your raises to get essentially non combatants that would have been, you know, in danger uh, off the premises. And, uh, uh, you guys are by the doors. You can hear uh, the sound of what's clearly Minister Minjun kind of a high pitched nasally voice as he talks. And, blah, blah, blah. and uh, he's talking, and then there's Magistrate Hario. You can hear his sort of more learned tones in there. Sounds like there are some, some more elite guards there, probably bodyguards in there. Um, and the thing you'll hear is, uh, uh, Mr. Minjun will go, uh, it, why, why is the sword, why is it glowing? How do you guys want to proceed? Uh -oh. Do I have one last race still? Yes, you do. Um, I think I would like to make it unglow. Well, I'm still using, um, I'm still sort of using my scholarship here. Okay. So, um, just because that's the skill I've been using for this whole time. So I just Absolutely. Um, I figure at this point, now that we're at the doors, and I'm familiar with like a great hall like this, so I'm kind of assessing where the different exits are, where the different passageways might lead to, so that maybe they can't really catch us by surprise by like using their knowledge of the, the grounds to get advantage on us. And so they can't like like cowardly flee away from you. Yeah, I mean that's as soon as Ishikawa rushes in with the death bringing blade. I mean, like, wh what do we expect they're gonna do? All right, so you guys get that set, and then do you throw the doors open? Do you open them quietly? What is what is the scene when all of this breaks? Well, the first thing that happens is. Um, you know, Ishikawa is maybe advancing first and the two of us kind of like alongside of him and Koenu's like tracking in the hallway behind us. And we can't speak at this point because we can hear them talking and we're kind of creeping forward. And I just look over and catch uh, Ishikawa's eye and I just look at the sword and kind of inquisitively. Um, but it, it's like, it's like, you know, are you all in? Like... I'm getting the read on you right now. Like, what? Where is your head at as far as Hario? Like, has he offended you enough to warrant the use of such a dark weapon? Uh, Ishikawa, knowing that the light 
bringing blade is on the other side of these doors by the way is this uh, uh are the doors like like the rice paper uh, door that you can slide no, open? actually uh, uh, they are they are sliding doors but they are wooden okay cool, uh, cool. Uh, han is a more solid construction of these things figured as much just want to double check sure <clears throat> he does bring forth the uh, the death giving blade from over it's, his shoulder, kind of it's glowing a little. Loses it, and then he puts his normal katana in that in his place. He, he hasn't drawn it, but it is the weapon that he will wield as they enter this place. All right. So here's the effect of that. I'm going to tell you, Rich. This is a good thing. Having that blade out, you'll you'll roll normally but it forces the life-giving blade to also roll normally. So you're eliminating six dice from the life-giving blade by doing that. Okay? Dang. So Yeah, but that's, it's giving life. I mean, those could be good dice. It's giving me life. It hits you, know? you and yeah. it heals you. Wow. It's giving me life. <laughs> yeah. um, All right. Can I suggest yes. that we take a uh, five minute before we start rolling then? Cause I, I, okay. Two let's take, let's take five and then we'll <laughs> get to rolling and we'll finish off this, this last, last scene. Okay.
Were you thinking of Brave Lull with the the bear? I'd forgotten that until until you oh. said that. Yeah. It's definitely a classic move. I mean, yeah. Bears like to pose like that for whatever reason. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think I will give him. I think I'll give him like the 30, you know, 30 health points. Let's see. The... Yeah. Well, you guys did give a few danger pools there. So, <laughs> yeah, so danger pool is back at one. I, well, it's I back at one. one. Oh. It's called the danger pool. It's so exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so doors get thrown open, and it's a largish room. Uh, the the there are platters set with with drinks and food and and little uh, you know food bowls and all of that uh, sort of uh, classic uh, 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 Korean uh, style settings of 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 no big things but tons of 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 little things uh, all over the place. Um, which uh, I can't remember what the, the phrase is for that. But anyway, uh, you know, there's bebim bop and all of that around. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, a well-appointed uh, 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 dulcet, I think is actually what it's called, but it's like tapas. Uh, uh, big, big cushions and couches and, uh, you know, bookshelves and beautiful decorations and, and uh, uh, lovely tapestries and things in here. And you will see... Clearly, Minister Minjun, he's in a kind of a white robe, uh, sorry, a blue robe with a white front, and he's got that sort of like black hat with the little wings off of it, the little thing coming down. And uh, then you'll see Magistrate Norio, who's in, you know, a fine kimono. Um, and uh, you'll see that there are two, like, uh, look like more rougher uh, sort of bodyguard types that are kind of standing by doors here. You know, they've got the uniforms on the flat hats and so on. And they've got the broad blades at their belt and they look up in shock as the doors come open. So uh, Akiyama, what is going to be your approach in this scene? First of all, I have a question. Um, yes. Have I maybe um, in my, Ability to navigate through this place. Have I proven there is more to nobility than expensive clothes and attending court? Is that worthy of yeah, a hero point? That sounds like a, a hero points uh, journey. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Lowell. Um, okay. Then I think with that hero point, what I would like to do is I would like to communicate with so the void spirits. Okay. So the uh, it says here the element of void represents mystery, practicality, and potential. And I imagine with all the subterfuge going on in this castle, the the void come away are very active here. So what I want to do is I want to command the 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 void come away within this room. It says they are rise subtle and occasionally contrary, prone to meddling in others' business. And what I want them to do is I want these two conspirators, these two men who have disgraced their positions, to to hear have their ears filled with whispers, their guilty conscience kind of overwhelming their senses. And I want Perfect. like the shadows to show, you know, silhouettes of their victims and stuff like that. I, I want, I want the room to, to, to mess with them. So you mean using mysticism and what's your trait yes. you want to use with that? Um, I think it's, I think it's my respect for, for nobility and how these two have sort of soiled that. Perfect. So that plus your two bonus dice. Um, Thank you. Uh, Ishikawa, what is going to be your approach in this scene? Uh, Ishikawa, at this point, when they step in and then Akiyama does this crazy mystical thing, I think he's going to try to intimidate Oreo to avoid this bloodshed because once it goes down, the death dealing blade comes out. He does not want to do that. Okay. Um, uh, so what do you want to call that? Is that 
empathy is or or what do you want to how do you want to describe that as oh yeah much empathy uh yeah maybe it is empathy though i think yeah okay i'll go with empathy that and and respect so okay. offering a little uh, peace yes i'm going with peace not respect so peace okay. is the trait empathy is the skill okay and that is his intent and he can speech five if you want but that's that's the intent all right, and I'm going to give you a hero point for that. Um, and you get your two extra dice. And I'll and spend a hero point to give you three extra dice. Okay. You sure? Because it's going to stop the fight. You should spend the other, a hero point on Akiyama doing amazing stuff. What? You mean like so, it, so we do fight? <laughs> I don't, I'm, I don't only, think we have I'm only judging this based on the last three games with you that that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always have to play it's so cool. You don't always, uh, just always when we play this game, which is great. <laughs> it's, it's not a slam. It's just a recognition of reality. Um, it's all good. I'll take it. I just wanted to warn you. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe I'll help Akiyama mess with them then. So you're so so Akiyama's messing with their minds and you're playing off of that to help stop the fight as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, that sounds cool. Okay, so Yeah, instead Akiyama, of taking advantage to like fight them, he's kind of like using that as an opportunity to get at them in a different way, maybe like now that they're thrown off or disoriented. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can take the hero point three dice then to to shadow puppet their ass, and <laughs> I will. Eat. Um, maybe I'll just be covering our rears by like, um, maybe there's an alternate route, and that's where I'll be standing behind for now. So if they fail and they try to run, then I'll be right there. So that sounds to look like athletics, then. Uh, yeah. Sh yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And I'll be exercising my compassion by not beating them up. Okay. And that sounds I good. I also spend a hero point for Akiyama. Ooh, also, do that. I, I, already got, I already got three bonus, don't I? But can we do, both do it to, yes, towards Akiyama? Yes, you can, Akiyama? actually. Oh I'm doing gosh. that. Ooh. I don't need all these dice, you guys. Save them Take for it. yourselves. Yeah. Do, we haven't well, seen this much is going to be crazy. crazy. I want, you, I want your message to go insane. I want, it's next level. I have eight <laughs> bonus dice right now. Good, good, good. Do it. Yeah. All right, here they go. So let me let me tell you a couple of things. So some of the risks we've got guards in the room. Uh, they are obviously going to try and sound an alarm. Uh, so that's that's one thing that needs to be dealt with. You've made, you you're going to slow if an alarm does go off. You're going to slow anybody coming in. Um, of course, there's the blade that uh, Horio has in his hands. So getting that is something you want. You will also see seated sort of in the corner, um, very grumpily, is Magistrate Sawa, who is, she's kind of tied to the chair, but she's been given a bowl of rice to eat and has clearly kind of been put to the side to be ignored as, as a hostage here. Um, and so freeing her is also an opportunity uh, uh, at, at, at play here. Have so we everybody seen roll. Sawa before? Yeah, it's she's the Suzu, one that you right? sent uh, to her Suzu? doom. Suzu, sorry, Suzu. Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, we still have Suzu. her picture in the, the other right. thing. Because I was like, oh no, Suzu. she's been taken here. Like, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. She might have just gone home. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. Okay, so three. All right. Three. Get your raises. Tell me your business. So I've got 13 raises. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Three, four, five. I have five only. <laughs> so I'll see you sometime. <laughs> okay. okay, I might just spend a lot on one individual. Well, we got, uh, we've got Doom Pool action possibly as well, right? So let's I've just got one point on that. Three, four, five, six, seven. Three. Yeah, someone else up the stakes. I have no dice to sell, but I would love it if you could. Yeah, I'll I'll sell you when I have one extra die. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and buy that. I can activate stuff then with that. How many races did you have, Fraser? It is uh, five. Five, and Rich, how many do you have? 
I think I'm gonna um explode uh, spend a hero point to explode this one ten. So give me a sec. I'll sure. How to do that in this thing? I guess I'll just. I don't know what to do. Like I'm just go. I'll just go to. I'll go to the roll for your party and just roll another die because I'm, I'm going to give myself. Yeah. If, otherwise, like if you don't do force exploding at the beginning, I don't think you can. So. I mean, do you have to declare it beforehand for the hero point to explode? No, you it? don't have to. But oh. but the the machine. The All machine right. is flawed. Yeah. Ooh, an eight. I don't think that does anything for me. Uh, I have four raises, and I wasted a hero point on. Dumb. You can re-roll a die too, though. Uh, I did my re-roll, and that's how I got four raises. Oh. I had three. Mm, okay. And now I have an eight that I can't do anything with, so I'll just take a hero point for it. There you go. Okay. Good. See, you I mean it paid for itself. Get a hero yeah. point to get a hero point. <laughs> really dumb. <laughs> awesome. But you might have spent a hero point to get another raise, so that's worth it, too. All right. So, Akiyama, what do you want to do? So, um, the, the current scene is there are two, I guess... There, there are two guards that are, are, are you know, there to defend. There's uh, Minister Minjun in the room, and then there's Magistrate Nerio with the life-giving blade in his hand. Are the two of them like leader boss type characters? The two guards, yeah. So, so, so the, the what about the uh, minister and magister? Yeah, they all have a strength rating, rather okay. than being a, a individual mook or a brute squad. Right. Okay. Um, then I think, how many raises do the two of you guys have? Five and four. Four. Okay. Um, and is are their respective strengths supposed to be known to us so that we can like choose how much to chunk away at them, or is it kind of like a mystery health points thing? I'm that's, cool. I'm that's cool. more of a mystery health points thing, at least the way I've been playing it. Um, yeah, I I'm have, cool with that. I have it says activate my virtue to see what Spend their a hero point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do that, um, and then I'll see what their. Let's see. Activate your virtue Does, to discover a brute squad's type or to know a villain's rank and advantages. Um, so I will tell you that uh, Minjun and Horio are a uh, strength six. Uh, they're they're uh, basic duelists, and then the the guards are uh, uh, strength five. Okay each um and do, do we uh is it public knowledge uh when they will act to when like what raises they have or no that is not known okay cool but um certainly not before 13 and right there's a pretty freaking big gap between 13 <laughs> and when they're gonna go so i think i will tell I'm you you doubled the highest one <laughs> That's all I need to know. Um, I think I will then. Um, I think I will then spend. Okay, so I'm going to do kind of like a double whammy action here. Okay. Um, I'd like to spend five raises. Um, and I would like for Koinu to run out from, from behind the group. Uh, this is the first time that she's looked so terrifying. It's like it's shot in a way in this, like, what, what's the lighting in the room look like? Uh, lamps and candles, that kind of thing. Yeah, so like low light flickering, there's this massive, like, hulking bear form running through the room, and she just gets up on her hind legs and lets out, like, a terrifying roar and, like, claws the air. And because of what the void spirits are doing to their minds, this image is, like, enhanced, and the shadows are, like, lengthened, and it's just this big, like, shadow beast, basically, like... That's what the camera sees from their perspective, right. and I would like to just, um, I would like to just weaken one of the two of them to one. If I like, is it is it? I could, can I spend five to do five wounds in that way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which one do you want to to weaken? I will tell you that uh, uh, Minjun, uh, sorry, no, Horio, because the the sword has some resistance to spirit effects. So okay. you could um, with five, you could take out one of the guards, no problem, or you could take you could reduce Minjun. 
I mean, this is kind of this is kind of silly, but I kind of wanted to since I have so many raises, I kind of wanted to go five on one, five on the other, take them both down to one, just to just as like my magic doesn't finish them off, but the spirits like degrade their minds so heavily that they're just easily dealt with by the other two or something. I just thought that'd be cool sure. in fiction. If, if that would be ten ten raises. Yeah, because I figure like eight will pro I'll probably go again on eight, right? So I can just do these two actions one after the other. It, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so you'll go again on three, and right now Minjun has been less reduced because of his. Re uh, sorry, uh, Horio has been less reduced because of his resistance, but uh, Minjun is freaking out. He, you see him, Wah! you know, falls back over the thing. He's grabbing for his blade, screaming for his guards. There is this bear comes in. You know, the big shadow. I mean, what we see is this massive shadow of of the death bear across here, and all of them. You know, from their perspective, the bear is 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 covered in blood and and they're screaming and they're you know they're shouting. They're hearing the shouts of the damned in their ears from the spirits. Um, I, th I think I think maybe even they hear like whispers and cries of Lady Matanabe, like you know begging for her life and stuff. Like they're like it's it's guilt trip stuff. It's like flashback. That's the like double whammy is the the shadow bear and then the psychological assault, basically. Perfect. Um, and when uh, uh, that uh, that happens, and then uh, you do that, and then on six, uh, it's like Horio is is kind of not even in necessarily control as he kind of leaps up, and that blade, the the sheath flies away, and he s flies over at you, Ishikawa and slashes at you um and he's gonna deal um, six wounds yeah i will counter that okay um, yes so i will prevent a number uh, of wounds equal to my ranks maybe, and weaponry sorry can i counter dead rich so that you can do your thing sure i think it just takes one raise to do that though but yeah, but then you'll have less, and you'll have to wait two yeah, turns. Yeah, true, right? true. Okay, yes, I'm more than happy to let you do an okay. amazing thing, Nelko. That is yes. So I'll that just is Perry. Okay, uh, so uh, you move up to uh, Perry. Uh, so what that will do is, what's your ranks in brawl? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Four. Okay, um, then uh, Ishikawa will only take two. Okay. Uh, you leap up. You'll go again on uh, four, Fraser. Yeah. Okay. So the the sword is like coming down at Ishikawa, and then the staff um, comes flying out, and it hits like a thud into the staff. And Naoko says, "You will hear these words." Um, and uh, uh, does two wounds to you. He kind of blocks that. Minjun is uh uh freaked out but he's not done um and he will uh, go to uh hit with his straight blade at you naoko on four um so uh you're gonna take uh three wounds three wounds essentially he's freaked out and he's throwing the blade around and he will cut across you on four Cool. Yeah, and I'm like holding that guy's sword still, so it just is something I just take. And uh, Horio uh, will uh, just go to strike you with a uh, uh, for a uh, uh, a single wound, then on five uh, and uh, sorry on on four uh, Ishikawa. Ah. Uh doing some tricky maneuver. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was Minjun and Horio on four. Um, uh, now Ishikawa and uh, um, Nako on four. What do you want to do? Both both Minjun and, and Horio are in bad shape from uh, this spectral phantasmal assault upon them. Um, well, if you are trying to, if he's trying to faint, if I attack that guy first and then you go after that, then I'll absorb the whatever he's trying to do and then you can do your thing. Um, 
Is that how faint works? When you perform faint, you deal one wound, and the next source of wounds on your target this round deals one additional wound. Cool. Uh, but wait, then there's bash. You deal one wound, but the next time your target deals wounds this round, they deal one less wound for every rank you have in weaponry. I don't know which maneuver oh, was. Oh, yeah. I was so it depends who the target was. One yeah, was he, had, he did a maneuver essentially to reset his maneuver count. That's what his thing with his special, with his style. So essentially he did one thing so he can do his uh, uh, slash or lunge against you on his next round. My plan is to slash at this point. Okay, I'm not yeah. wasting my lunge. That was okay. crazy talk. Do it up. So are you going to slash at him, Rich? He, he, Ishikawa draws the blade in a jitsu strike, uh, but I didn't use the jitsu form. I didn't say I was doing that, so I don't get the one extra thingy. You can always do it, yeah. Okay, well, then, yes, I'm doing that, and I get to use my one little duelist school advantage. But I was like, all this, I said in my head, make sure you say you do that thing. <laughs> Jitsu focus. And I didn't say it. But anyway, you're giving it to me because you're the best. And, and this might be it. the final blow. I mean, we got to see be. Ishikawa's full power. Right. So how many wounds is that going to do, Rich? That will do one extra to weaponry, so a total of five. Oh, this dude is done. Yeah. Um, Because even with his reduction... So, Rich, Horio gets that blade up to kind of bring it, and he does sort of turn some of the force of it. uh, So it doesn't land, but how does that... How does that Ayujutsu strike kill him? So, the yeah, the Ayujutsu strike, he brings the blade up, and... There's this like shadowy blade. Ishikawa's strength and his skill, he just knocks the blade aside. And then he just spins it in both hands and then hacks from here to here. It's there's that thing, and he's got that white kimono, you know, with the silver on it, so it comes down, and there's at first just this line, like a thin line of red. And then it'll just bleed out to soak the front of his kimono, and he will crash to the floor. Um, I, th- I, th- I think if I could add something, I think the you know the void spirits now are kind of like flickering around the room, and all the lights are like f- uh, flickering, and the flames are like almost going out. And I think with it with this blow, I think the the you know the void spirits are sort of attracted to the death bringing blade, and they sort of like. The, the slash we actually see like a shadowy trail behind it and it's almost like nice. a like a black wound cut through him before like yeah. the blood seeps through and, and i'll say the guards are freaking out uh naoko uh uh um minjun minister minjun is still still there what do you do um and this other guy was attacking me too right yeah he attacked you and uh he's the guy who uh crazy shark said is is a, a terrible tyrant Oh yeah, yeah, and it's uh, Rio's boss. It's it's his boss. Certainly, he he he's associated with Rio, so in some way, karmically, he is connected to that burning of that monastery. But is that enough for Naoko? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> um, I think that she'll say, "Did you listen to the words that?" Ishikawa said <laughs> and in an attempt to like can I demoralize him to make him stop uh, yes. fighting that way yeah yeah um you kind of turn and you look at him and 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 do that form that face that you do that solid face and he sees I mean there's the flickering shadow of the bear behind him the screaming of the voices echoing in his ears and he will throw his blade down and run and and go uh, to to run out and those guards who were his guards with him they will they will break as well okay um and uh so uh you know you can hear the alarms going off in the castle uh the blades on the ground uh there's still the void spirits around um uh you will see uh crazy shark will come running in you see that she's got a bag uh, uh, on her back now, uh, and she, you see her run to the 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 window, 
and she quickly ties off a rope and she throws it out. Oh, nice. And she goes, time to leave. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'll go for, for um, what's her what's her name again? Um, the, uh, Susu. the one tied up. Susu. Susu. Suzo, yeah. Ma the uh, magistrate of the weird name that we can never remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's hard. Um, so do you cut her I'll... free or do you carry her out like you did the other woman? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll cut her free. I'm okay. assuming that she's capable. <laughs> and then do you then do you to uh, repel with her down? Uh, yeah, if she if she seems like unsteady and needs help. Yeah, she's been tied up to this chair for like a while. Right. Um, so you'll grab her and and you know repel out the window. We'll see you heading down. Um, she's trying not to shriek because she is an official. She doesn't want to shriek. I'll spend a hero point to do an act um, of balance and grace with her in it as well. So what, is, so what does that look like? Are you bouncing off of ledges or what? What is that? Um, I kind of like? picture it as using the rope as a guide. I literally just run straight down uh, to the ground. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just that okay. fast. I like that. Um, and uh, uh, Akiyama, uh, what is the, the scene with you getting out? What does that look like? Um, well, I think it's it's a little less interesting for Akiyama. I think she wants to follow them out. But for Koinu, I think like she gets ready to follow um, to follow Naoko down the ladder, right? But she turns and she like re like re like uh, realizes that you know there's still a bear in here. But I think. If 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 we're wrapping up, and if you'll allow me a little bit of license, continuing with with Please. my action from before, I yeah. think the um this moment, like very reverent, she like collects herself and kind of like reaches out to the void spirits within the room, like asking and pleading to them, like this is th this would be something that normally they would not be able to do for most Kanoi, but uh, in in this moment of you know sp spiritual significance for her, like you know retrieving these blades and stuff like that, she reaches out to them like them to kind of like coalesce um, around Koinu and Koinu starts running towards the window and sort of takes on like a shadowy form and just soars out of the window, like past me. And the sh shadow just glides onto the ground and like turns back into the form of uh, ghost bear goes down. I like it. I like it yeah. very much. Um, you can hear the spirits of the void, you know, and they will say there is a cost to be paid. They whisper that in your ear as you make this absurd demand of them but you can go down the 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 rope down to the 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 boat down below uh, and ishikawa what do we see from you sorry she uh, just says the life of my best friend is worth any price paid and then and then runs back out go ahead ishikawa all right and then crazy sharks like oh i thought i was her best friend no. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh all of this chaos is going on. Everyone's basically beating feet, getting out, and Ishikawa stands over the dead body of Horiyu, and then he does the traditional like katana one time, two time to basically snaps it, and all the blood comes off of it, and the hand at the very edge of the the scabbard just and finds a home. Then <laughs> a little bit of flair uh, he, with his his sandal, he he kind of picks up the light bringing blade and catches it and then she's that and walks after that he doesn't run he just walks there, there, the there's one line from crazy shark because she, she can see these are she, you know uh I, I could i could carry one of those for you <laughs> no no you couldn't oh nice oh <laughs> uh, I, 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 I go on I was just going to say that's such a good line to almost go to like a montage scene of us escaping. But if you oh, have yeah. a last thing to add, please do. Nope. Nope. No, uh, I think that's, that's great. That exactly montage, ropes, boat, ship, you know, uh, drinking all of all of that, even as the, the credits are, are starting to roll for that. Does that seem fair enough? Yep. Love it. I'm into it. And that's where we'll we will end that session. That's how you quick start. That's how you quick start, man. Nice stuff. <laughs> Fun stuff. I do like this. Um, yeah, I'm I, I'm starting to warm to the process for sure. Yeah, I've got to get more comfortable with the the the, the raises in the scenes thing. I want to watch. 
uh, so uh, let's do quick roses and thorns. Um, I I like what I'm doing, but I also feel like I'm missing some of the mechanics. Like I'm not quite getting how it plays, and I'm doing the best I can. I really, really, really want to see one of the um, you know the John Wick people. I want to watch them run it. I've got to st I got to take the time, find those videos, and watch them run it. I think that will give me some more insight into it. Um, so that's that's something for me as my my thorn. Um, other thorns about the the play, uh, the characters, the session, the mechanics, anything rich. I'll be honest, I, the traits, you know, I, I felt like the third session around I started to kind of get it, but it's still just, I don't, I don't super love the traits. I just, I just don't like, I want to, but it's, it's game wants to be a high action swashbuckling. That's what it's designed for and trying to wedge in peace and respect when those aren't really the challenges that we call for and you almost have to run the game against type of what it feels like it wants to be it just it's just weird don't don't like it don't hate it but don't love it yeah i was hoping as you said it would it would fit and i, I the the point that was made earlier about kind of looking at the opposites i think is a good one but it's going to take a while before i get used to that yeah that was for, for me it's like idea. It's a good idea they i mean they're not really traits. They're kind of just like, uh, uh, you know, charitable values. Like they all just seem like these like very positive, uh, you know, m almost moral code type things like loyalty, re loyalty, respect, wisdom, honesty, compassion. Like they're all these, these virtuous values that like a lot of the time people need to call on other things when, you know, they're passionate about something. Like I like the idea of like, calling on, you know, the traits that are inherent to you to kind of fuel the action that you want to take. But I always felt kind of like shoehorned into just like being honest and loyal and respectful. And like, I like that. I like being generally pushed in that direction, but I still want to have the opportunity to, to, to play the other side to make, you know, that more effective. I want yeah. the juxtaposition. Yeah. Um, Matthew, any, any other thorns? Um, well, are, we're just doing thorns right now. Uh, well, we do yeah, one we thorn, and then thorns. we'll come back and do one rose. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think there might be a little like um, I'm wondering uh, about like the process of the the action sequence. Um, wondering that instead of uh, I'm wondering that instead of having like uh, each instance of spending raises being like a separate action, if sometimes you're maybe supposed to take an action and then kind of add raises to that action too at the same time. Um, take advantage of an opportunity, overcome a consequence, or like inflict wounds or something. Like, I wonder if the actions are supposed to be all more bundled up. That's kind of the impression I got from the initial reading of the rules, but I could be wrong. And I think it would definitely be helpful to listen to uh, a seven CGM. But I also think that there's enough flexibility in this system that there's it's open to a lot of interpretation. And I think for like a three shot game, this is kind of turning into a rose. But I think it kind of sort of made sense how we ran it in that light form. Mm -hmm. Sort of without, you know, like I, I think, uh, you know, just the, the, the quick start basics. I, I think it worked well the, the way we were doing it. I certainly lean into anime. Um, so, and that's, uh, that's what I dig. So, uh, uh, F Frazier, uh, thorns. Um, yeah, I had the same problem grokking traits as I did all the other times. And yeah, the, the action or not the action, but like the way that the raises work, it does seem like there's something going on there. Like, I wonder if we're supposed to use our raises a lot faster, like Matt thinks, and then right after that, in the next go, then the MC has, like, more stuff to introduce and be like, oh, and now this happens, and now this happens, and mm -hmm. we're, like, burning through the rounds faster. That might make a little bit more sense. It um, kind of felt like we were doing too many things with a single action as well. Like, I was trying to think of a way to spend, like, nine raises on, you know, different things of like five different mysticism actions and it was kind of like you know how much am i supposed to be using this skill in this one scene when i'm when i have to spend a hero point to give a kamoya a single command right so mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. know yeah 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 that it's a good question i want to see how other people do it certainly I, I was i was running how i read it um but you know i could be wrong uh so i need to to, to go back it, and look it worked at that great yeah i enjoyed yeah, it yeah. worked great so 
Either way, we got really good scenes out of it. Yeah. Uh, if it was one way or the other, and then, um, yeah, the the nebulous feeling about making the fortress was a little bit unsteadying at first, but then I got into it. Yeah, and I think if maybe I had set up more clearly, okay, here are the obstacles, here are the things that need to be overcome. You know, how do you how do you pick those off? How do you reduce the the, the strength of those? Um, well, I, I really liked that you could spend the raises to like paint the picture of what this fortress looked like. And initially, I didn't get that. But then as we as it became clear that we were doing that, that was really exciting. I like that. Um, yeah. I'm going to do roses. Um, I loved all your guys' stuff in that first combat scene on the boat. Um, I, I've enjoyed all the scenes, but for some reason, that scene sung for me. Like... I, I really dug that. So that was one of those moments where I felt like you guys were really on it. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ishikawa going all out and taking the captain down and then kind of having to regroup and then, then, you know, coming back at the end to, to, to reap was, was good. Um, so I really dug that. Uh, Rich Rose. I love the solid teamwork. Like, this game not only encourages it, I really felt like after three sessions that we had it down. Like it was fun how much support there was going in action sequences, not just like we play a lot of story games where we're like supporting each other emotionally and all this other like flivly, flivly, flip. But this was like <laughs> teamwork, right? This was like three badasses doing completely different things in concert to be incredibly effective. It was super fun i would watch this hong kong movie flick at any time with some weird samurai uh and uh and, and japanese shinto priest <laughs> as doing their crazy stuff it was it was really cool matthew rose i got a lot of them man this was probably <laughs> one of the most fun like action focused games i've ever played like sessions i've ever had i think as a one shot i think you you nailed, like, if this was a one-shot, that would have been the most satisfying one-shot I would have ever played. Like, I think you really nailed the couple strong encounters, the pacing between them, the interesting characters, the the good one-liners. Like, you were just on tonight, Lola, and, like, and then the, the other two of you, like, uh, Fraser, you played such awesome support with Naoko. Like, I love that you were always on board to, like, bring people onto your action sequences and just throw around dice and, like, you know, you and you were aware enough of the mechanics to kind of put Rich into an advantageous situation or to not put him in a, uh, even a, as a player, a situation that would have been less enjoyable for him. Like, you were looking out for his fun by, you know, setting him up in a, in a way, and that, that's just awesome play. And, Rich, man, your portrayal was, was so good today. Like, like, all of your lines, you just speak. I don't know. You, I, I, I was finding I was kind of bumbling through Akiyama's just at, at a few different times, like the the gate of of her cadence and stuff like that. But you were you, your all your delivery and stuff was just so good, and uh, it seems like a natural character for you to play, and it was it was a lot of fun. I have just like what would Toshiro Mufune say? <laughs> okay, I'll say it like that. So it's much. all the podcasting experience, man. It's the grappling <laughs> yeah. voice. It's Thanks, man. Uh, Fraser, you get last word tonight. Um, yeah, I'll echo all of that. Um, I really liked when Rich uh, suggested that we approach the scene in a different way, and then it made it made the whole last scene uh, very different than all the other things that we had done. And uh, yeah, it was just really, really really fun and you set this tone right away with that really good one-liner at the very beginning with like uh because you know hero paid us well already and then like shit went down so yeah the the tactical stuff that you can grok with the system and then use to have fun with everybody that was awesome i would definitely i would definitely play it again and i think everybody was really on point and i was glad too that rich had that suggestion because um it really made uh, Akiyama shine, and and that was cool to see. Oh, and thanks for the six dice, guys. That was so awesome. That was that sweet. Yeah, like, it was, it was, it was well used. That. It was well used. It was nice. Thank you. Thank you, guys, everybody. I really appreciate you playing this with me. I I will when once we get the the final version of Katai, or or at least a preliminary PDF of it, I will probably run it again because um, I I dig it so. 
Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, playing, and I'm going to stop the recording now.